You're listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline connects you with experts from all over the world to help you take charge of your career, your business, and your life. Wrap along with us. Visit drjacqueline.com to learn how to become a guest or a sponsor. And now, the doctor is in. Welcome. It's so nice to have you here with us today. This is our fifth show today. Woo! Welcome to Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline presents A Better You. Lessons from the best coaches, consultants, and trusted advisors. My team of experts, I'm so proud of them. We have four shows every week bringing you entertainment, ent- education, and just mind-blowing information. I'm backstage while the presenters present. I'm frantically taking notes of everything that they're teaching us to help us be better personally and professionally. I am your host, executive producer, broadcast engineer, and director. And joining me today from New Zealand, my own coach and friend, Mariska, welcome. Thank you for having me, Jacqueline. It's always a pleasure to see you, and your hair's down today, and you're uh, looking quite lovely and very fallish. Is it fall there yet? Yes, it is fall. Um, we are having some good, nice warm days, and then we have some you know, more more chilly days, and today is one of those more chilly days, hence the scarf. Um, <laughs> I, I have to say that when we have warm days, it actually looks horrible outside because it's overcast and it's normally raining too. Uh, Whereas when we have cold days, it's nice and bright and the sun is out. So you sort of go, (laughs) I want to see the sun, but I also don't want to freeze. (laughs) Uh, And tell us in New Zealand now, how are things with COVID? Are you out and about? Mm Mm-hmm. Um, so we've been actually out and about for a while, being a moderately small island with uh, just under 5 million people. So we we really, really small um, in comparison with you guys, definitely like a fraction. fraction. Um, we were able to, to contain it fairly well. Um, so the only cases that we do have is people that comes in from outside and they are being kept separate from the rest of the population to ensure that everybody inside the country stays healthy and safe. Uh, But we are also going into our vaccine um, part of it. So we have started with all our emergency key personnel first. So they're busy with them at the moment. And then towards the end of May, we will start with... um, the people in our communities that is at the greatest risk. So we should be rolling this out slowly but surely like the rest of the world. And then hopefully, hopefully, we'll be able to travel a little bit broader afield again. Well, hopefully you're going to be traveling in October of 2022 so we can actually meet in person at Journey to a Better You. I'm very excited for that. Yes, I'm very excited for that, too. (laughs) It's beautiful. I remember you telling me at the beginning of uh, what was locked down here in March that if you were going to New Zealand, you had to be isolated for 14 days. I think they have like a a location right there where you go. Yes. Um, So what they did is they set up some of the hotels, especially the ones that's closer to the airports. Um. And then those, what happens is when you land in the country, you will go through your normal stuff at the airport and then you will go to the hotel um, where you would need to stay for 14 days. Um, during that time, you will get tested. So you get tested, I think, on arrival, um, somewhere in between in the middle of it and then before you go out again. So if at any point they find out that you do have the virus, then of course you'll stay as extended. Um, And if you are clean on your last 
test and, and nothing happened during your stay, then you are free to go and you can enter the rest of the community and be safe. So that's that's worked very well so far. The only thing is there is only so many hotels and so much space. And because it is a long period that people need to stay in it, um, capacity is a little bit limited. So we can't bring in lots of people all at once. So they, they, they have to sort of monitor the amount of people that can, can enter the country at any one point. Um, so that's that's something that you need to take into consideration too. And as far as I'm aware, I haven't traveled myself, so I, I'm not too sure about all the, the ins and outs of it. But as far as I am aware, the hotels has been booked <laughs> in advance fairly far into the future. Uh, so if you do want to come and visit, it is worthwhile checking these type of things out. <laughs> Check in advance. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that. I know I had shared with the public that this is not an interview show. So sorry I was interviewing you, just interesting information. <laughs> but we will get right down to your presentation. Should I take a break or are you ready to go? Oh, we can try take a break and then we can okay. share Perfect. some of the other things that you do on the show. Wonderful. All right, we'll take a break and hear from some of our sponsors, and then we'll be right back with A Better You. Hi, my name is Zane Carson Carruth, and I'm the author of this book, The World's First Tooth Fairy Ever. Reading is magic. Studies have shown that reading to your children lays the foundation for greater success in life. Reading helps develop language and vocabulary skills. It helps improve memory, and it encourages curiosity and inspires creativity. The benefits are immeasurable, and as a parent, you'll benefit too. In only 10 or 15 minutes a day, you'll be creating more memories and a bonding experience that will last for years to come. So take time to read to your children. Read them books about things that engage and interest them. Tales of fairies and magic fascinate children, and as everyone knows, the Tooth Fairy is at the top of the list. If your child loves magic, wands, adventure, and what child doesn't, you'll love reading them books from the trademark series, The World's First Tooth Fairy Ever. Follow along as Abella, the world's first tooth fairy, accidentally starts the tooth fairy tradition. Learn the tricks of being a professional tooth fairy in the book, Abella Starts a Tooth Fairy School. Your child's imagination will soar as you read the adventures of Abella and her magic wand. These wonderful books are available at worldsfirsttoothfairy.com and at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Walmart. It's what we do together that counts. The Big Alliance Story, a true story about faith over adversity, perseverance, and entrepreneurship. Read Earl's story and how he became an entrepreneur. Available on Amazon, Kindle, and Audible.com. For more information, contact Earl Hurd at earlhurd at BicAlliance.com or call 1-800-460-4242. Have you ever tried to build people into a team? Maybe you've tried bowling or zip lining or paintball or pizza making. These events can be fun, and they can make everybody happy for a while. But in the long run, do they really turn people into a team? Now, imagine the members of your team scattered all over the world, working from trains and airplanes, from remote offices, client locations, or working from home. How do you build a winning team when your playing field might be the entire world? With BCAT, we've created the answer. Working completely online, no matter where your people are, we turn them into an engaged and motivated team in three simple steps. First, we use the BCAT survey, which they can take online anywhere, anytime, to reveal the North Star that represents their shared pride in the work they do. Next, we work with your team's leaders and stakeholders to convert that North Star into a role target, an ideal virtual person who represents your team's best self, living its best day at work. With our internet tools, we hang your North Star high in the sky, 
where everyone on your team can see it, no matter where in the world they might be. Then we guide and help everyone on your team in creating personal plans to align themselves with your team's North Star. We help each of them develop the positive habits that, day by day, every day, steer them closer to your North Star, aligning themselves with your team's signature dreams and ideals. And over the long haul, we offer programs and coaching techniques that help them stick to their plans. Remote team building isn't hard. It doesn't take long. And it's just as much fun as pizzas and paintball. You build winning teams around a purpose, not a place. BCAT is the answer. Other stations are tuned in too. You're listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. Welcome back to Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline. This is our A Better You presentation platform. And with me today is one of my hand chosen, with these hands, hand chosen experts, my own personal coach. Mariska, would you please give us a little bit of background about yourself? I'll highlight you and then we'll talk about your presentation, okay? Mm -hmm. um, I'm Mariska Dupria, and as you guys know, I am stationed in New Zealand. I'm a certified ICF, ACC coach, and I work in the transformation and the career planning space with clients to move from specialized positions into managerial or leadership roles, as well as anybody that wants to move from a different space in their career to something else. So that is what I normally do. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that with us. And as our audience hopefully knows by now, we are building playlists of lessons. And so you, you've been coming regularly. And uh, what will your lesson be on today? So for today, um, we are doing resilience hacks. So what we did Last week is we looked at um, resilience and why it's important. And this week we're going to look at a few hacks and what we can do to bring that more into our life. And we also have on some of your previous shows, I can't remember exactly the weeks that it was, uh, but some of the previous shows we have actually physical exercises that you guys can try out and do. And so in order to, to find Mariska's previous lessons, it's so simple. All you have to do is go to YouTube in the search engine, put in Dr. Jacqueline, D-R-J-A-C-A-L-Y-N-L-L-C, subscribe, subscribe, so important, and then go to playlists and look for a better you and just type in her name and then you can find her very easily. So I'm looking forward to your presentation today. Are you ready to go? I am ready to go. Okay, I'm going to add in your presentation oh, and I'm going you. to delete myself and I'll put up the timer. <laughs> Whoops, I oh, always do that. That's the wrong way I around. Always, <laughs> I always did because I meant to hit remove and I hit spotlight. Okay, here we go. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Now it's just for the timer and we have our timer. Wonderful. Okay, so with our resilience hacks, we will start off with just a brief overview for you guys first so you know what it is that we are discussing today. So we will be looking at stuff that we need internally, um, stuff externally, as well as then building our resilience. So when we look at building resilience, this will incorporate all of the aforementioned items. So when we think about internal resilience, this really has to do with 
our self, our self-control, our ability to self-control, and our ability for being self-confident. Um, so it's it's all about the self, the the individual inside of you. So this helps us with um, flexibility. It helps us with the ability to cope better. Um, it makes us more. Uh, it, it makes us so we can accept things easier and reframe them a little bit. So it it might feel like it is the end of the world, but looking at it from a different point of view, we might see that there's a very valuable lesson that we can learn from it. Um, so that is all about the inner bit. We also, when we look at our um, self-control and confidence, we also look at our strengths. So things that we can physically do that would help us build resilience, um, areas that we might grow to build resilience, and this might be um, becoming more courageous or uh, employing humor. Uh, humor is a wonderful way of building our own internal resilience um, because if we can just not be so serious with ourselves and find the, the funny bit in whatever happened and laugh at ourselves, it just makes it feel so much lighter. There is, <laughs> this actually reminds me of a um, monks that what they do is they do a laugh meditation. And what happens during the laugh meditation is they have to laugh. So they have to laugh for, I can't recall whether it's five or 10 minutes, but they have to laugh, right? During that meditation, that's what you do. So you laugh. And initially, it, it doesn't wait for you to feel like you want to laugh or there's something funny happens that makes you laugh. This is you need to just laugh. So what they do is they, they laugh and then the one of the head monks, if of course you do not laugh, you, you get helped to laugh and not necessarily by presenting a funny photo. And eventually after a while of laughing, people start to really, really laugh and enjoy the laughter and it becomes contagious so this is this is just to show that even if we don't always feel like it if we stay in that for long enough if we keep our body in it for long enough we can make it so so that's a little bit of food for thought there then the next one is our external so externally, this um, relates to our relationships mostly that we have. This would be your, your personal relationship, your um, people you interact with within your community, your colleagues at work, um, any interactions that you have basically with other human beings. Then externally is also your purpose and meaning. So things that, that you do that motivates you or that inspires you. And it might be that it's not only stuff that you physically do, but it might be material that you consume that inspires and motivates you. So anything that's related to your purpose and your meaning, um, that is also external factors that helps us build resilience because it, it helps us to persevere. It, so these two, when you think about internal and external factors for resilience, the one and the other one holds hands. They don't walk on separate paths on their own. So when you think about internally being optimistic, um, having some perseverance, being courageous, that would go hand in hand with maybe 
implementing something that you are inspired to implement, um, working towards your purpose and meaning. So they, they don't function on their own. They can function as a, a team up, basically. And then the last one is our community and support system. And our support system, that might be Dr. Jacqueline with A Better You. Um, she provides us with a support system of advisors that can help us in different areas. Um, your support system might be your family. Your support system might be your own team of advisors that you have. And this is something that a lot of people, we don't always think about, oh, but I need to have my own board of advising directors, so to speak. We need them. We need them for us to be able to see different points of view. Um, we need them to help to support us when we need the support and encourage us when we need the, the encouragement and also to help warn us when there's stuff we do not see. So the people you, you surround yourself with is really, really important. And they're really important to ensure that you can have nice, strong, resilient muscles too. So it's, it is a little bit of a team effort. Um, so that is basically our external part of it. Then building resilience. Oh, before I go to building resilience, the easy way to remember the external and the internals is by utilizing the seven C's. So the seven C's stands for competence, confidence, connection, character, contribution, coping, and control. So if you listen to them, you will find that, for instance, control, coping, character, that's more internal type of things. Um, connections, contributions, that goes more towards external. So that's a nice, easy way to remember the internals and the externals is by utilizing the seven Cs. Um, okay, so for building resilience. When we build resilience, we have, as I mentioned um, a little bit earlier, there's different ways, and I've, I've used some examples already. So developing self-awareness, this is knowing oneself, right? Knowing what we are good at and knowing what we're not good at. And it is okay to not be good at it. Nobody needs to be brilliant at everything, right? You have specific things that you are interested in, specific things that you want to excel at. And being aware of what those things are and being aware of the things that you don't want to excel at or that you're just not good at doing. That's where our advisors come in, right? Or our support people to help us with the things that we're not good at. So we can share the load. It makes it easier for both of us because they won't be good at stuff that we are good at. So we can help them again. So that's the self-awareness bit. Being aware of what we are good at and also being aware of what we value, right? Values are, are a really important part of this puzzle. Then building self-regulation for ourselves, the skill for doing that. So the way that we self-regulate is if we are in a situation where there is a lot of stress and um, we, we don't necessarily know what to do or we feel overwhelmed, what is something that we can do to regulate our own emotions and our own thoughts? So the thoughts might just be coming up left, right, and center, and the emotions is running wild. And the thought and the emotion is not us. It's just a thought and an emotion. The thing is, during a place of high stress, normally we do not think about the thoughts and emotions as just a thought and a emotion. 
we think of it as this is the truth. So self-regulation help us to go out of that space and actually see it for what it is. Now, ways that we can self-regulate might be through mindfulness practices. Um, and there is a wide variety of different mindfulness practices that we can, we can practice. Um, there's things like breathing practice that you can do. Um, yoga is a really good way of becoming more mindful too. And it is a great exercise in the same same time um, then learning to get some coping skills now coping skills can be different for different people depends on what it is that works best for you so i will just give you a couple of examples of coping skills this might be journaling um, speaking to friends so you can reframe the way that you think physical exercises works really well being in nature um, you can go for a walk or just sit under a tree or look up at the stars, whatever it is that you enjoy. Um, Socialising, if that gives you energy, being with friends. And any other creative outlets that you might enjoy. This might be dancing or painting or drawing or creating sculptures or whatever that might be. Then the next one is, of course, increasing our optimism. Now, the easiest way to do this is to focus on, in the moment, what can I do, right? This is a dark cloud. It looks horrible. I just want to run away. But what can I do? What's one positive thing I can do and take out of this? So that's a way of cultivating optimism. Then connection, of course, as we said, this is something really important, especially with other people around they can help and support us when we need the help and support. So reaching out to our network and building our network in different areas. Also do the same as we would do with ourselves, what's our strengths and weaknesses and see where's our network strong and where might we need to work on our network to get that a little bit more up to par because that's an area that maybe has a gap. And then the very last one, is our strengths so strengths this can you can do it easily by just speaking to some of your friends and finding out what they think you are good at normally with strengths we don't see it for ourselves um, alternatively what you can do is you can visit the via institute so the via site has a test that you can do it's free and you can go and find out, according to the 24 VIA strengths, what strengths are your top five strengths. And then just play around with those and cultivate them a little bit more to increase your resilience. And that is how we hack resilience. Very well done. I love it. Uh, so much information that's, we really have to start with ourselves, right? With awareness. And in order to be resilient, we have to know where we are now and what strengths we have. And it's great that you gave some tools and some hacks for us. It is my pleasure. <laughs> there's, there's really so many different ways we can, we can build and increase it. And for different people, it's going to be different things. So some people might have a wonderful network and they have loads of friends and it's no problem whatsoever for them to lean on them. And in other cases, people is very isolated. And I've, I've had quite a few conversations where, and it's so interesting. We know we have friends and we know that they're key, but once, we in that situation where we feel that we don't know what, what, what's the way out, what to do. Then all of a sudden it's like, but who do I even ask? Right? It's, it's almost like we draw a blank and we don't talk to anybody and we, I don't know, go, go and sit in a corner and sort of do this. 
And that's not helpful. It's not helpful for us because we're not getting support. And it's also not helpful for the people around us because they have no idea what's going on. It's very so true. It, it's, it's really, really important to, to utilize our network um, and be able to draw them in. Because, I mean, somebody will just, they'll most probably say something really small and really silly and it's just the thing you need. Right, people don't know what we're going through. So we need to, to be open to sharing. And I think most people want to help. I think most people, yes. it, it feels good to help other people. Of course it does. And it, it brings us closer. If we can help somebody else, it brings us closer. Definitely. So there's all sorts of advantages. Yes, there are. And I just want you to give your contact information. We've been scrolling it, but for people on the radio who can't see our beautiful banner, how do they get in touch with you? <laughs> okay, for the people that is listening to this and not watching it, the way to get in touch with me is you can email me at Mariska, M-A-R-I-S-K-A, at Journey to Discover, J-O-U-R-N-E-Y, two, so that's the number two, D-I-S-C-O-V-E-R dot com. And that's the way you reach me. Fantastic. Thank you so much for being here once again. It's always great to see you and learn what you're up to and, and listen to your lessons. I've took some notes and I'm excited to just incorporate some of your hacks in my own life. Ooh. <laughs> I look forward to hearing um, how they, they turn out. Wonderful. Well, hopefully we'll see you again next week, and I hope you have a beautiful day and you stay warm over there. I will definitely do that. Have a scarf, and I think I'll go and, go and grab a cup of coffee now. <laughs> okay. Well, great presentation, Mariska. Thank you again for being here. Thank you for having me, Jacqueline. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye. Well, what a great day. What a, a great presenter. If you want to be on our program, just go to a better you.tv. We'll have some conversations and make sure that it's a good fit. I want to announce the shows that we have for tomorrow. We have a big day tomorrow starting at 1030 a.m. Eastern time, which is 730 a.m. Pacific daylight time and then 330 British summertime. It's getting complicated. We have a better you. Lessons from the best coaches, consultants, and trusted advisors. And we have three presenters tomorrow. We have Diane Floyd Bain. We have Mike Boisino. I hope I say that right. Mike Boise, he goes by. And we also have Philip Sykes joining us. So that is a fabulous show. You don't want to miss it. Coming right after that at noon Eastern time, 9 a.m. Pacific Daylight Savings Time and 5 p.m. British Summer Time, we have fashion, fitness, travel, and leisure. And my co-host is Diane floyd Bain, and our guest is Sophie Levine. We have at 1.30 Eastern Time, which is also 1.30 which is 6.30 British summertime, we have I Have a Story to Tell. And we have a special guest for that. I will let you tune in tomorrow to see. At 3.30 Eastern time, which is 8.30 British summertime, we have uh, presenting Pet Psychic Amina. Amina actually has the day off. So I have two great guests, and uh, Trish Robichaud and Dottie Boone. Looking forward to that at 5 p.m., we have stories of hope, inspiration, and overcoming adversity. And Trish Robichaud is joining us again. She has, uh, she's got a lot of information, a lot of things that she's going to share about her life, which we don't want to miss. And then finally, at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 p.m. British Summer Time, the Variety Show with my co-host, Lori Mendelson, who is so much fun. Our guest is Andrew Mondia. So please join us. Also, my first book is dropping. Uh, we are 
doing our launch June the 17th in honor of my mother's birthday, but we'll be pre-selling May 19th. That's next week. You don't want to miss it. So please join our community. Please go to drjacqueline.com, contact us, sign up for our newsletter. If you want to be on our show, book your session. As I mentioned at the top of the show, we have 16 shows a week now, so there's got to be something for everybody. So go ahead and book your session. We are looking for some new sponsors because we do have 16 shows. We can make a commercial for you. It's very inexpensive. It's $2,500, and you can use that commercial on your own website, wherever it is that you want to use it, and we'll run it here. Also, we have sponsorships available by the month. They start out at $250 to be uh, played on one of our shows and $3,000 a month to be on all of our shows. So look forward to having you with that. And finally, if you want to have your own show, but you don't have a platform, we will produce your show for you under the branding Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline presents... Tony's Technology World, whatever it might be, a cooking show, you want to teach us how to get fit, a wellness show, whatever it is, uh, that's $4,500. And we give you a custom intro, a custom outro. You can use our scheduling tool. And then there is a monthly fee depending on where we're streaming your program to. So all of that's available on our website. We have a storefront there. You can just go to drjacklin.com slash store and check it out. Okay. We'd love to have you join us. Thank you again. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a beautiful rest of your evening, morning, day. Thank you again.